Welcome to Willow's Book Apothecary. I am the creatrix of this channel, Willow. With the holidays right around the corner, we are approaching that time of year where our stress is amped up a few notches. We are spending more money, we are spending more time with our families, which is a hassle in itself at times, and for us northerners, we are driving in the snow. So it is so important that we are taking extra care of ourselves through the winter season. When I was at my library, I found a pretty book on the shelf and <laughs> I decided to pick it up. So I picked up The Comfort Book by Matt Haig. I was really drawn to the Tiffany blue and the stars and the white font. And then I realized what it was about and who it was by. For those of you that are not familiar with Matt Haig, he is a worldwide best-selling author. He has also written The Midnight Library, which I have not read yet. I just unpacked it. From my boxes from when I was moving so I'm actually starting it tonight but I do know what it is about. Given what the Midnight Library is about it has it does not surprise me that Matt Haig came out with the comfort book. I'm going to read the back for you so you can get a better understanding of what this is about. The comfort book is a collection of little parcels of hope gathering notes, proverbs, and stories, it gives us with new ways of seeing ourselves, the world, and ourselves in the world. Matt Haig's blend of philosophy and self-reflective memoir builds on the wisdom of thinkers and survivors across the ages. This is the book to pick up when you need the wisdom of a friend, the comfort of a hug, or the consolation of knowing the messy miracle that is being alive. I read this book um front to back and i loved it it did feel like a warm hug if you it this is one of those books that you can pick up and flip to any page and find a nugget of wisdom and as you know those are some of my favorite books because they're easier to digest you don't have to sit down and really commit to reading it matt haig is known as the king of empathy and in this book, which also kind of serves as a memoir, he discusses his life experiences with depression, anxiety, and suicide attempts. It is about coming from that dark place and moving into a place of light and self-compassion. On top of that, he also has little proverbs, poems, he has a music playlist, a recommended book list, as well as recommended movies that have helped him throughout his life. So I will be listing the book list that he recommends in the description box below so everyone can get a better idea of the books that helped his mind. As always, my favorite thing about videos like this is sharing with you some of the snippets, little parcels, little nuggets, of words that really stuck out to me. It is my hope that maybe someone will find the validation that they need for this overall human experience, which as we all know is not always pleasant. So we're gonna get into some of my favorite pages. Page 10. It's okay. It's okay to be broken. It's okay to wear the scars of experience. It's okay to be a mess. It's okay to be the teacup with a chip in it. That's the one with a story. It's okay to be sentimental and whimsical and cry bittersweet tears at songs and movies you aren't supposed to love. It's okay to like what you like. It's okay to like things for literally no other reason than because you like them and not because they are cool or clever or popular. It's okay to let people find you. You don't have to spread yourself so thin you become invisible. You don't always have to be the person reaching out. You can sometimes allow yourself to be reached. As the great writer Anne Lamott puts it, lighthouses don't go running all over an island for boats to save. They just stand there shining. It's okay not to make the most of every chunk of time. It's okay to be who you are. It's okay. Page 30, Rock. The best thing about rock bottom is the rock part. You discover the solid bit of you, the bit that can't be broken down further, the thing that you might sentimentally call a soul, 
At our lowest, we find the solid ground of our foundation and we can build ourselves anew. I love this one with all of my heart. Page 34, words, part two. So yes, words are important. Words can hurt, words can heal, words can comfort. There was a time when I couldn't speak. There was a time when my depression was so heavy my tongue wouldn't move. A time when the distance between the open gate of my mouth and the storm of my mind seemed too far. I could manage monosyllables sometimes. I could nod, I could mumble, but I sounded as if I were in slow motion, underwater. I was lost. To want to speak was to want to live, and in those depths I wanted neither. I just wanted to want, if that makes sense. I remember reading Maya Angelou's I Know Why the Caged Bird Would Sing at School. I remember reading about how, as a child, she had stopped talking for five years after suffering the most horrific sexual abuse at the hands of her mother's boyfriend, Mr. Freeman. When the man was killed by her uncles, eight-year-old Maya felt such guilt for his death sh that she stopped talking, becoming effectively mute for years. It was through a family friend and teacher, Bertha Flowers, that Maya was exposed to great writers. She read Edgar Allan Poe and Charles Dickens and Shakespeare and the poets Georgia Douglas Johnson and Frances Harper. Slowly, through reading and learning, Maya found her voice again and never let it go. By the late 1960s, this new girl had become one of the key voices of the civil rights movement. A voice that not only spoke for herself, but for millions of people facing racial discrimination. Language gives us the power to voice our experience, to reconnect with the world, and to change our own and other people's lives. There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you, wrote Angelo. Silence is pain, but it is a pain with an exit route. When we can't speak, we can write. When we can't write, we can read. When we can't read, we can listen. Words are seeds. Language is a way back to life, and it is sometimes the most vital comfort we have. I love that one. Page 44, a thing I discovered recently. I love stillness, slowness when nothing is happening, the blueness of the sky, inhaling the clear air, bird song over traffic, lone footsteps, spring flowers blooming with defiance, I used to think the quiet patches felt dead. Now they feel more alive, like leaning over and listening to the earth's heartbeat. Page 52, a little plan. Be curious, go outside, go to bed on time. Hydrate, breathe from the diaphragm, eat happy. Get a routine baggy enough to live in. Be kind, accept that not everyone will like you. Appreciate those who do. Don't be defined, allow fuck ups. Want what you already have. Learn to say no to things that get in the way of life and to say yes to the things that help you live. Page 57, chapter. There is no point spending an entire life trying to win the love you didn't feel when you needed it. You sometimes just have to let go of an old story and start your own. Give yourself some love, you can't change the past. You can't change other people. You can change the you, though. You narrate this story, so start to write a new chapter. Page 61. Be humble because you are made of earth. Be noble for you are made of stars. A Serbian proverb. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> Page 74. Pasta. No physical appearance is worth not eating pasta for mic drop. <laughs> Page 126. Your problem is how you're going to spend this one and precious life you have been issued. Either you're going to spend it trying to look good and creating the illusion that you have power over circumstances, or whether you're going to taste it, enjoy it, and find out the truth about who you are. This is Anne Lamott. This one really resonates with the year that I've had. 2021 in a nutshell for me. Page 156, protection. Once upon a time, I felt pressure not to let people down. I stayed doing work I hated, went to parties I didn't really want to be at. I saw people I found agonizingly hard to converse with, faked every smile. 
and then my mind exploded. After which, I realized it is better to let people down than to blow yourself up. Page 183, Caterpillar. In the dark cocoon, a caterpillar falls apart. It disintegrates into its own enzymes. It becomes liquid, mush, caterpillar soup, and then, slowly, it is reborn a butterfly. Cocoons aren't a cozy resting place. Cocoons must feel a pretty horrendous place for a caterpillar. Yet, the caterpillar's fate has proven a great metaphor for our own misfortunes and struggles. The greatest changes stem from the darkest experiences. We fall apart to become new. We go through the dark to fly in the sun. This is for my people with productivity guilt, productivity anxiety. Page 212, resting is doing. This is how I live my life. <laughs> um, resting is doing, you don't need to be busy. You don't need to justify your existence in terms of productivity. Rest is an essential part of survival, an essential part of us, an essential part of being the animals we are. When a dog lies in the sun, I imagine it does it without guilt, because as far as I can tell, dogs seem more in tune with their own needs. As I grow older, I think that resting might actually be the main point of life, to sit down passively inside or outside and merely absorb things. The tick of a clock, a cloud passing by, the distant hum of traffic, a bird singing, can feel like an end in itself. It can actually feel and be more meaningful than a lot of the stuff we are conditioned to see as productive. Just as we need pauses between notes for music to sound good, and just as we need punctuation and a sentence for it to be coherent, we should see rest and reflection and passivity and even sitting on the sofa as an intrinsic and essential part of life that is needed for the whole to make sense. Resting is doing. The last one that I'm gonna be leaving you with, page 246. How to be an ocean. You haven't failed in a moment of sadness. You haven't lost in a moment of defeat. You are not a statue standing in an eternal contrapposto. You are a thing in motion, a rising tide, a cresting wave. Your vast depths witness every marvel, every wonder. You are then marvelous and wonderful. So don't fight the moon, allow every tide, and give all your wrecked ships the place to hide. Um, it is my hope that Matt Higgs' words were able to provide you a little bit of validation, a little bit of comfort just as he has provided that for me. Until next time, happy reading.